Recently, someone left me this comment on one of my videos. The link was to an old video by Veritasium, in which he explains how relativity makes electromagnets work. It was a good video, but it skipped over a couple of things that needed an explanation. Watching it, I could understand why some people may have been left puzzled. I don't usually make reaction videos, but I thought, what the hell? In his video, Veritasium introduces the Lorentz contraction, which tells us how moving objects contract in the direction of motion. He then goes on to explain how this contraction makes electromagnets work. I will play the relevant parts of the video and then come back with my comments. A copper wire. It consists of positive metal ions swimming in a sea of free negative electrons. Now the number of protons is equal to the number of negative electrons, so overall the wire is neutral. So if there were a positive charge or positively charged cat nearby, it would experience no force from the wire at all. And even if there were a current in the wire, the electrons would just be drifting in one direction, but the density of positive and negative charges would still be the same, and so the wire would be neutral, so no force on the kitty. But what if the cat starts moving? Imagine for simplicity that the cat is moving in the same direction as the electrons with the same velocity. Well now, in my frame of reference, the wire is still neutral and so there should be no force on the cat. But consider the same situation in her frame of reference. In the cat's frame of reference, the positive charges in the wire are moving, so according to special relativity, their separation will be ever so slightly contracted. Also, from this perspective, the electrons aren't moving, so they'll be more spread out than before. Remember, objects take up more space when they're not moving than when they are. These two changes together mean there's a higher density of positive charges in the wire, so it's no longer neutral, it's positively charged, which means that the positively charged cat will feel a repulsive electric force from the wire. But in my frame of reference, this seems mysterious. There's no force on a stationary charged cat, but a moving cat is somehow repelled from this neutral wire. How do you account for that force? Well, we say it is the magnetic force, and that's mainly because a wire with current in it deflects nearby magnets. So really what this experiment shows is that a magnetic field is just an electric field viewed from a different frame of reference. In the cat's frame of reference, it is repelled from the wire due to the electric field created by the excess positive charges produced by the effects of length contraction. In my frame of reference, the cat is repelled from a neutral wire due to the magnetic field created by the current flowing in the wire. So whether you see it as an electric or a magnetic field just depends on your frame of reference, but in either case, the results are the same. So an electromagnet is an everyday example of special relativity in action. All right, so he says that if the electrons were moving, a stationary cat would not experience any force because the wire is still neutral. But the question one might ask is, if the electrons are moving, shouldn't they experience a Lorentz contraction? And wouldn't this create an overall negative charge, which would then attract the positively charged cat? The answer to the first question is yes, and the answer to the second question is no. The space between the electrons in the direction of motion does indeed contract, leading to a higher density of electrons. But now the electrons feel each other's electric charge and want to push away from each other. And since the electrons are essentially free, move around inside the wire, they drift apart until they reach an electrically neutral configuration. That is, until their density matches the density of the positive charges. So indeed, the density of moving electrons would not change. But you might be asking, if in a stationary frame the moving electrons adjust their positions to counter the net negative electric charge, should they not do the same in a moving frame to counter the net positive electric charge? Well, no. The additional positive electric charge, because it is uniformly distributed along the direction of motion, exerts a force on each electron in all directions, which amounts to a zero net force. And since the positive charges are bound to the material, they themselves cannot adjust their positions to counter the Lorentz contraction. The last thing that might puzzle some people is, why does the moving observer measure the distance between electrons to be larger than what the stationary observer measures? Well, as we just saw, the distance between the electrons does not contract. However, 
rulers in the moving frame do. And so the moving observer will indeed measure this distance to be larger. So I hope this explains what's going on a bit better. If you're not a math person and are satisfied with the clarifications I have given, you can stop watching now. Otherwise, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, let's now write down what the electric charge and current are in the moving frame in terms of the electron density and current as measured in the stationary frame. Since in the stationary frame, the wire is electrically neutral, the total charge density is zero. Recall that the definition of current is charge density, which in this case is negative, times the velocity of the moving charges. To the moving observer, the positive charge density will increase by a factor of gamma due to Lorentz contraction. C here is the speed of light. The distance between the electrons, as measured by the moving observer, will increase by gamma which means that the density of electrons will decrease by gamma. So, the total charge density in the moving frame is this. Plugging in gamma, we end up with this simple expression. We can also write it in terms of the electron current as measured in the stationary frame. The current in the moving frame is simply the positive charge density as it is the positive charges that are moving in this frame, multiplied by their velocity, which is now oriented to the left, hence the negative sign. So, there we have it. These are the charge densities and currents as measured by the two observers. If you've been following my videos, you probably know that we could have obtained these results in about 5 seconds by simply doing a Lorentz transformation of rho and j. If you need to refresh your memory, I put the relevant video in the description. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you had fun watching it. Cheers.